My day's been going good, man. How's your day been going? After dozens of men from the Navarro cartel, the cartel which Marty and Wendy are working for, are butchered in Mexico in the ongoing war, Wendy discusses with Marty her idea to set up a legal and safe business network as an alternative income stream for them and the cartel. However, while Wendy wants to live her best life using the cartel, Marty is scared and doesn't want to take any risk, so he disagrees with her plan. But a stubborn Wendy, together with Helen, visits Omar Navarro, the head of the cartel, to pitch her idea. In the Bell Casino, Marty is very hesitant to launder the money, for fear of having the FBI watching him. But to fund the cartel's war machine, Helen forces him to speed things up, and together with Ruth, they organize a high-stakes poker game. But things escalate when Frank Jr. is losing the game, forcing Ruth to throw him out and off the boat. After being locked up for breaking and entering, Wyatt is bailed out by single mother Darlene, who offers him a place to stay. After being fired from his job as a substitute teacher, Wendy's brother Ben decides to go visit his sister in the Ozarks, while Helen and her daughter Erin also visit for the summer. Having Navarro's approval to expand the cartel's legitimate business, Wendy plans to buy another casino. They approach the owners of the other casino named The Big Muddy, Carl and Anita, and make them an offer. However, Marty is really against the whole idea of expanding and further enriching the cartel. He just wants his family to be safe. So unbeknownst to Wendy, he secretly tells Carl that they should decline the offer. When Wendy and Helen make Carl and Anita an offer they can't refuse by grossly overpaying for their casino, Marty employs Frank Sr. to burn down The Big Muddy's competitor. After this event, Carl and Anita decline to sell, forcing Wendy and Ruth to rig the big money slot machines and not in favor of the house. Losing money every day, the big money owners decide to sell their casino. But by purchasing another casino, the birds trigger a federal alarm. Following the federal alarm, the bell is being audited by the FBI, led by agent Maya Miller, who offers Marty a deal to give up Navarro and start working for the feds. Now unable to launder the cartel's money through the bell, Marty wants to use the recently purchased Big Muddy, but this option also isn't available, because Wendy wants the Big Muddy to be a clean business, set up as the beginning of Navarro's legitimate empire. Wendy gets called by Navarro himself, who reveals that their conversations are being monitored, which is indeed the case since Marty is listening in on them. Having accomplished her last mission of buying a new casino with success, Wendy plans to take baby Zeke back from Darlene, and has Darlene strike her in order to start a custody battle over Zeke. While Agent Trevor flips Tommy, one of the arsonists of the Big Muddy's competitor, Marty is taken by Navarro's men, just when he was about to take Agent Maya's deal and give up the cartel business. When Ben and Ruth are stopped from following Marty's kidnappers, Ben wants to call the police, but is stopped by Wendy, who reveals everything to him, after which he reveals it to Charlotte and Jonah. Meanwhile, Marty is being held and tortured in a cell by Navarro, who keeps asking him, what do you want? Forced to continue without Marty, Ruth manages the money laundering and the bell with a new team, including Ben. But with Marty gone, Maya gets suspicious and approaches Wendy, telling her that they can save Marty from Navarro if Wendy only confirms that Navarro has taken him. But an ice cold Wendy doesn't fall for it. When a money laundering account is then flagged and locked, Marty proves his importance to Navarro by having the account unlocked and finally tells the cartel leader what he wants, to launder the money when he thinks it's safe, promising Navarro to compromise and turn Agent Maya. Satisfied with the answer and Marty's plan, Navarro lets him go. Back in the Ozarks, Marty tells Ruth to stop Frank Jr. loan sharking the casino's guests. When she then approaches Frank, things heat up and Frank has a put in the back of a van to go for a bumpy ride. Seeing Ruth's injuries, Ben, who quite likes her, covers Frank's car in bird seed to have birds damage the paint. Meanwhile, Wendy is called by Navarro and he orders her to buy a horse farm, while Marty tries to persuade Maya to compromise her integrity by offering her low-level criminals in exchange for her looking the other way. But a determined agent Maya doesn't fall for it, because she is trying to flip him instead. At Darlene's hearing, Wyatt decides to lie about the confrontation between her and Wendy, causing Darlene to keep Zeke. 
Later that day, Wyatt and Darlene solidified their interdependence by performing the act of love. Not alone anymore, Darlene continues the heroin business that she and her husband had built up. When Wendy is at the horse farm, several armed men show up and castrate one of the horses. Wendy then learns that that horse was owned by Navarro's rival, and Navarro reminds her that he can change anything in her life at a moment's notice. While at their couple's therapy meeting, Marty and Wendy both go all out attack mode against each other when Sue, the therapist, reveals that both of them have been bribing her to side with them. However, after the yelling is done, they realize that Sue has heard everything, including the cartel business. When later Ruth and Ben grow more fond of each other and express it, Ben reveals that he has bipolar disorder, the reason for his mood swings. Darlene then visits the corrupt Sheriff Nix and asks him to again start working for her. When Marty then discovers that he is being followed, the Birds and the Navarro cartel soon find out that the cartel war has come to the Ozarks when a money drop between Ruth and Frank's Kansas City mob ends in a slaughter of Frank's men by the hands of the Lagunas cartel, Navarro's rival, with Ruth narrowly escaping with her life after Ben and Jonah, who were following her with a drone, warn her just in time. Following the KC mob massacre, the FBI accused Marty of setting it up because he supposedly had found out that Tommy was snitching on them and needed to be dealt with. Believing this accusation, Frank Jr. goes into a frenzy and almost kills Ruth in a severe beating, forcing Marty to sever all ties with the Kansas City mob. Meanwhile, Wyatt and Darlene share their secrets, with Wyatt telling her that Ruth told him that she killed his father, and Darlene revealing that she killed her husband Jacob. While Helen has Sue, the therapist, murdered for knowing and wanting too much, Ruth is slowly recovering and tells Marty and Wendy that they need to take out Frank Jr. or she will do it herself. When Marty realizes that Sue was killed by Helen, he informs Wendy, causing a rift between the up until now BFFs. Ben then finds out that Frank Jr. had beat up Ruth and goes to his trucking company to confront him, but backs down when he realizes he can't take them all on. After getting drunk, he gets into a fight and is arrested. Things go from bad to worse here, when later that night, at the carefully planned fundraiser for Wendy's charity, Ben punches Marty and is then taken to a mental hospital. While Helen informs Navarro that the birds are becoming increasingly difficult, Ruth asks her nephew Wyatt for help in freeing Ben. Wyatt enlists the help of Darlene, who has Sheriff Nix release the mentally unstable Ben. His first act after being released is going to Helen's house and telling her daughter Erin how disgusting and evil her mother is and that she actually works for a drug cartel. Realizing that he's in some form of danger, Ben goes to his girlfriend Ruth and tells her about what has happened at Helen's. Having had to survive her whole life, Ruth knows that his days are numbered if they don't act now, so she takes Ben to Darlene to go into hiding. However, an unstable Ben soon leaves his hiding place and goes to the Bell Casino, not knowing that Nelson, a cartel hitman, is following him. Marty knows what's going on and quickly takes him to Wendy. However, Wendy is not sure what to do with him and decides to just get in the car and take him somewhere, anywhere, just away from the cartel's reach. During the drive, Ben decides while in an emotional state of chaos to call Helen and apologize. When Wendy catches him calling Helen, she becomes hopeless and desperate, realizing that the emotional illness of her brother is indeed a vulnerability. They then go to a restaurant to have dinner, but a devastated Wendy sneaks out of the back door, leaving Ben all alone, while Nelson arrives to clean things up. When Wendy arrives home, she reveals to Marty that she gave away Ben's location on purpose and thus had him killed. Together with Marty, Ruth attends Ben's cremation and afterwards goes berserk on Wendy for killing her own brother and her boyfriend. She decides to leave the bird empire and wanders into the open arms of Darlene, who after shooting Frank Jr. invites Frank Sr. to join her heroin business as partners. In Mexico, the baptism of Navarro's son is interrupted by an attack of the Lagunas cartel and the war keeps raging on. After what Ben has done, Helen wants to take over the Bird Empire and have Navarro kill Marty and Wendy by forging a confession in which Marty gives up the cartel. However, the Birds realize that to win the battle against Helen, they need to make themselves irreplaceable for Navarro and win his cartel war. They give Maya footage of the DC mob slaughter, forcing the FBI to hunt down the members of the Lagunas cartel. 
With Helen and Birds now definitely on opposite sides, Navarro invites all three of them to Mexico. Upon arriving there, without even looking at her, Navarro has Nelson execute Helen and ushers in a new beginning with Marty and Wendy. Yeah. <laughs>